Cactus Golf Podcast, episode number 16. What's going on? What's going on, man? How are you? Not too bad, man. We're a couple weeks away from waste management. Mm-hmm. Kind of excited. We're getting some plans together. I know you are uh, got some family coming in. We're going to chop it up a little bit. I know chop our... Uh, we should have on the podcast. Oh, yeah? That'd be very interesting. We need a bigger table. Going to uh, go go golfing in Tucson, aren't you? Yeah, we're, we're doing here in Tucson. Just yeah. Tucson. We're going down there for uh, 36 holes on Thursday. So it's much cheaper, dude. It's much. It's All so. Right, it's, with the Super Bowl here in Phoenix, the prices are just outrageous. It's insane. Like I was telling you, like uh, I'm part of like this Arizona Facebook group, and uh, someone was talking about one of the courses that's charged. I think it was like 400 some odd dollars or whatever. Yeah. And then I showed you some of the pictures that someone posted. They played it that other day, and it was just like a goat track. So they're, I mean, taking advantage of it. I don't blame them. I mean, it's, I, uh, I, I did the same thing. You kind of expect it. Yeah, I guess yeah, you got to. But it's still crazy point. when you see the prices of courses, you know, those aren't that nice. But no. Yep. So looking forward to that a couple weeks away. Um, quick uh, summarization of what we're going to do here. We got a quick little intro segment. Got a Sony Open recap. Uh, American Express Open, which is this weekend. Betting corner and then a little interview at the end. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So today, kind of some big news kind of came in. We got Live Golf. Uh, is announcing a deal, a TV deal, finally. Their second season with the CW Network. Did they like, announce it or is it just kind of rumored? So, so it's agreed upon. I don't think the details have necessarily come out yet of like Got what it. the agreement looks like necessarily. Yeah. Um, all the fine details, but that's... It was, very, uh, it was, it was very vague with what I found. It was just like a, it's a multi-year deal. That's all I would... I, no, no, no amount of money was talked about or so, yeah, rights it's, or It's going to be a little different. So again, so first event for... Live is February 24th, so kind of cutting kind of close, right? It's got to, I mean, you know, this is obviously a big operation, these kind of events to broadcast and all that kind of you know, advertising, setting that up and all that stuff has to take, you know, some time. So um, cutting it kind of close there, but yeah, so first events in about a month, five weeks away. Um, so I saw that actually CW, the CW network, was actually bought mm-hmm. recently in October 2022 mm-hmm. by Nexstar, at least the controlling interest was 75% of it mm-hmm. in October. Um, so that's. And, and CW, do you know do you know what that stands for? I found out. Did yeah. you find it out? Yeah. I was going to ask. CBS you. and Warner Brothers. Yeah. So yeah. it just was bought CW. I didn't know that before. And I, I had no idea. I was going like, to look it up. I thought it was something different than that, but I mean, I guess that makes sense. CBS and Warner Brothers. Um, so that's cool, I guess. Um, and so CW is in 220 different U.S. markets throughout, obviously, the U.S. Um, they don't have any other sports partnerships currently. I saw that. And you know, I've seen them when you scroll through TV, I've kind of seen them before. I've never really. Looked at them. I think they have a few popular shows, like he's popular against the U.S. Like Young Sheldon, I think is a big one. Um, yeah. They had they have um, Blue um, Blue Mountain State. Blue Mountain State is that the one that was on Netflix? That uh, I think yeah. that was Blue Mountain State. I thought called. that was like Spike or something like that. No, I, it's on their app and everything. So well, I, think, I don't think it. it was like originally there though. No, I don't know. They might have bought the rights. They might have to it now. Maybe. They probably have yeah. the rights to it now. That's yeah. Fair. And then I think they had one like Riverdale or something like that. Um, the you remember Sweet Riverdale. Life of Zach and Cody? Yeah. The guy, the, like the main, I forget the kid's name, the actor's name. Yeah. But I think uh, he was like Riverdale or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the actor's names. Cody? Now. No, that was the kid no, that's in the, the show. Zach and Cody are the kids. Yeah, but Cody. It's the, I just said it. I don't even remember. I forget. No. But um, he was in that show. I think that was on CW as well. Um, so it's going to be a little different for the network. And so also, you know, most traditionally, if, I think like. TV rights, you know, it's kind of been popular with like NFL, NBA lately. Um, usually it's like ESPN or CBS, whatnot, buying the rights to show the content, right? Mm-hmm. But this is going to be a different deal, apparently. It's going to be Liv paying the CW to broadcast it, which is the complete opposite, you know, obviously what normally happens. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a little different there. So they're still, I mean, they're still going to have paying out of pocket basically for this, but at least they're going to have. You know, it be you know televised at least, I guess. So. Colin Dylan Sprouse. Sprouse. I had to look it up. Okay. It was gonna bother me. Colin Dylan Sprouse. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's that, that's interesting. I, I feel like the live. They obviously got money for it. So, like for them to pay CW. Like no, they said, have plenty of money they have for, money it, for it, it. Right. So I'm not sure how it'll work. Like they're paying the broadcast them. Is it like if they get so many viewers, they get some kind of payment? Like advertising. Obviously, they're gonna the CW is gonna like pay for advert or get receive payment for advertising obviously mm-hmm. um so it'll be interesting to see the details of that come out but that's um something they had to do i mean they had to have some kind of tv deal i think the last season they were only on youtube mm-hmm. and their website and i heard 
that just the ratings were awful. I mean, nobody was going to it. I tuned in a little bit. I was like followed on Twitter, and I would click on their little link to go watch it live every now and then. That was about it. Yeah. No, and I know the CW, I was looking at, like, where can you watch the CW right now, right? So they have their own app. Obviously, if they have, you have cable, you probably have the CW. They also have their own app. It's on Hulu and YouTube TV. So yeah. should be interesting to see. That'll be more more channels and more outlets for viewers to attend. So I was reading a thing, too, that Liv dumped a lot of money into production for last season. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like they're going to dump even more money into it now because now they're paying CW and well on top of it. Well, I think so they're paying them just to air it. I'm assuming yeah. CW will like do all the, the video, all, all, all the that good stuff, just operationally all what yeah. it takes to get it all set up. Yeah, I assume I that's that what it'll be. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't even know if it'd be worth it if they're paying to do all the operational side of like getting it all set up, the cameramen and whatnot, and then also uh-huh. paying them to air it. I would, I, I imagine that's how it'll be. Maybe one well, minute we'll see. So I thought that was interesting. Obviously, a big news. So I think I'll, I'll I'll tune in more now because of that. I think I mean we have YouTube TV. We mm-hmm. won't have it, so I'm just, I'll tune in more. It's a little easier to just pop it up on TV rather than just going to YouTube and whatnot. So mm-hmm. I'll watch it more. That'll be good. Um, still, I think they're still waiting to sign a few players um, to fill out their field. The full still waiting for that post, man. Still, I'll wait for that post. Yeah, they were rumored. Who was it? Um, I, Mito yeah, Pereira. Mito Pereira. Yeah. And I, I, I was opened my crystal ball a few months ago and kind of yeah. called it a little bit. I have it um, ready. <laughs> I have it ready. I just need the one thing. Rumored for Mito Pereira. Patrick Hantley's been tossed around, but I think he shot it down a little bit. Um, yeah. Nothing. But you know, we'll see if they fill out that field, and I think they'll they'll fill it out. It's just a matter of they want the bigger names, and they're like, okay, what's it going to cost? Yeah. And then. Last minute, they're just going to offer a chunk of change to somebody <laughs> to just come over and play. Could so, be. It'll be interesting. Could be. I did see that they also, the CW, got uh, NBC's um, and Golf Channel's broadcaster for um, golf events to come over. And he wasn't shy about it. Faraday, Faraday, Faraday. What was his first name? Um, I have it here. David Faraday. So he's a Golf Channel uh, broadcaster. And he was... He recently went over to the Live Golf team mm-hmm. and the CW, and he wasn't sure, uh, shy about it. He said, um, "He said I." Uh, he said, "Well, it's the, sorry." Somebody asked him about it. He's like, "Well, it's grow the game." Everybody says. He's like, "Bullshit." He said, "They paid me a lot of money." This is exactly what he said. <laughs> so he he wasn't yeah, shy I about I saw it. it. Didn't he say like he's covered like everything, all the all the majors. He's covered all the majors, he's covered all the players. Yeah. He's done Ryder Cups, Presidents Cups, and he was like, you know, this is something new. Plus, I think he can be. The head, uh, what's that called? The main person, head host, the main, I don't even know what that's called. Um, but he could be like essentially the, the main voice of Live Golf. Right. So, sure. Why not? Yeah. Sure, okay. Sure. So that was that was it. Just thought that was interesting. We'll see more details come out about that. I'm sure you'll see it you know, on Instagram, Twitter, or whatnot if you're on those. But um, quick some quick details on that. But let's go ahead and get into the Sony Open Good tournament, like we said. Good you field. Want to talk about the Netflix documentary. Oh, the Netflix. Okay, we have, yeah, we can. We're gonna talk about that for a second too, because I thought we were transitioning from uh, from CW to Netflix now. We do again. You know, there wasn't again too much. I think there we're gonna see it come out in you know a few weeks, February fifteenth, I believe, right. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I mean, they answered some of the questions that we were thinking about, like was Live Golfers gonna be still a part of this, and you know Brooks Kepka and Dustin Johnson are named, and there's a couple more too, they're actually named uh, on the trailer, the official trailer. So they're going to be in it. So that was kind of my question was, was the PGA going to keep those players in Just for Netflix's sake, I would be irate if PGA made me get rid of it. Oh, for sure. I would, it's just I, more entertaining. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure they signed some kind of contract that's like, hey, these guys are in it. Like, we're using their content. Yeah. And Netflix... If TJ is like, hey, you have to get rid of that, I'd be like, screw off. Like, no, we're keeping yeah, that. That's what people want to see. What are you talking about? So I, I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. I, that and then the fact that it's it's called season one. Because my, cur- my curiosity spikes is, is there going to be multiple seasons of this? Well, that's not the name of it. No, it's called Full Swing. Yeah. But the they're, the what they're releasing is season, is, is season one. one. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious if they're going to have multiple years of this. Be nice to see. You'd think they would announce that soon, because they would need to be airing currently, 
We're like recording right now. We're in season. Yeah. So. Unless they still are happening. Or did I see that it was already? I don't know. I didn't see anything on it, to be honest. I also didn't go looking for it. But it would be kind of nice to have multiple seasons of this. Are they doing the same thing with F1? Well, F1 is on, like, season six. I see. That'd be cool. And I guess they have one for tennis as well, I saw. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know what it's called, but I just saw they had I one. I saw the name, too, a little bit ago. Yeah, I saw that they had one, too. But if they if they do, that'd be nice. that'd be exciting. I'll be I'd be a big fan of that. It'd be hard. It's kind of hard for them, though, because you'd think they would want to see the ratings of it first, but they obviously they can't until you know it's released. Correct. So I don't know how they kind of judge that. I don't know. Off of I like how the official trailer starts with the way at the waste management though. Really? Yeah. The first scene is uh, them everyone going crazy on sixteen. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah, it was a good one to start off with. So, and then there was someone throwing a fit in the locker room, and one of the in one of the trailers, like throwing a club and stuff, in the locker room, or throwing something like a club. It was really quick. I don't know. I didn't see who it was though. I couldn't tell. There might be some drama. I'm sure there's going to be. I'm sure, there probably is. <laughs> All right, but Sony Open. Some news. We got some news there. So yeah, I got some things to look forward to. But Sony Open, good tournament, full field, like we said, first full field of the year. Si Wu Kim. See, woo. Secures pulls it out. Pulls it out. Almost goes into a playoff with Hayden Buckley, uh, but ends up pulling it out. Uh, back-to-back rounds of 64 and rounds on Saturday and Sunday to pull it off. It's his fourth win on tour. Um, <laughs> Jordan Spieth <laughs> had a share of the lead after Thursday and then missed the cut. Yeah. <laughs> not uh, ideal. Not ideal. Not ideal. I think that was the second time that's happened ever, I think I saw. Really? And the second time Jeez. you have a share of the lead and then, you miss, and then the cut. miss the cut. Oh, my God. So, not ideal. Jordan, I was thinking, I saw that. He is all, as close as you can be to being on the no bet list. Jordan just, Smith? Just because he's good, but he is so volatile. Yeah. Like, to try and pick the needle in the haystack of the week he's going to put all four days together is just, like, not even going to be worth it. Yeah, yeah it's hard to... I mean, anyone that's that is consistently performing, their odds are obviously not going to be as great as someone. They're going to odds are going to be better, which returned is not going to be as great versus someone. Well, it's just that he like never puts it together anymore. He has one or two good days, and that's it. We'll see. Like he never. He's just, Early. The heck, he just seems so. He's so volatile, but it's just not ideal for him. Taylor Montgomery, another good finish. T twelve, the rookie. Big not not, not quite not, enough not, for you to cash in not, betting corner, not T10, but. but that's okay. He was he was up there. He was up there. I was uh I was reading about I saw a little uh, post I think Golf Digest did about Siwoo Kim's talking about his holdout on seventeen that chip in that he heard the everyone go crazy because I think Buckley was behind him a hole behind him at the time. I Buckley think. was behind Siwoo. Yeah, the group, so they yeah, saw on him on they heard, he heard. The, uh, the crowd on 16 go crazy when he, he made the putt. So he knew that he had to do something drastic, he said, to in order to secure, at least have somewhat of a playoff contention or at least somewhat of a uh, in contention to win. So that's why he said he went a little aggressive at that chip and ended up making it. It's crazy. It's very crazy. So that doesn't go in. Odds are a little less less likely that he... Uh, that he makes it, but then uh, on 18, on the par five, he got it on in two, secured a two putt, and secured his victory. So yeah, so another another good one for Taylor Montgomery. He's man, he's he's gonna. I don't know if he's gonna win this year, but I mean, we're gonna see him a lot at the top. I think still, he's obviously shown that. Yeah, well rounded game, I think. But um, rounding out the top ten, like I said, Si Woo is the winner. Hayden Buckley second. Chris Kirk third. And then uh, three tied four, Andrew Putnam, David Lipsky, Ben Taylor, all tied four. Uh, and then five at T7, Aaron Baddeley, Matt Kuchar, Maverick, Mc- Maverick McNeely, Nate Lashley, Nick Taylor, rounding at the top ten. Um, so that's that was Sony Open. And so I was listening to the broadcast. We said We Alay in Hawaii last year, or last week was the tournament. Mm-hmm. It, I think I saw heard the broadcast that said We Alay is what it was, I believe. Mm. I heard the broadcasters pronounce it We Alay. Well, at least this week's a lot easier. This one's a little easier. I got this one. It didn't take me any long at all. I saw, 
You've seen commercials for it. La Quinta. Yeah. La Quinta. La Quinta, Quinta. Inn and Suites. Yeah. <laughs> um, the American Express. Before opened. you transition. Yeah, you got the... Uh, I got my got two truths and a lie, of course. So, my two truths and a lie for Siwoo Kim was he was the youngest to get his tour card at 17 years old. He was the youngest to graduate Q school. And he holds the highest score ever recorded on a par three in tour history. Which one is a lie? Wait, what was the last one? He holds the highest score ever recorded on a par three in tour history. I think the Q school is a lie. So the Q school is true. Okay. So this one's a, this one was hard. I try to make it a little more difficult. So um, I'll go. I'll start backwards here. Uh, he holds the highest score ever recorded on a par three in tour history is true. Um, it was at TPC Summerlin's 11th hole. He shot a 13 on a par three. One of us. He had, One he of had us. five balls that went in the water. That's tough. Um, the second one was he was the youngest to graduate Q school. That is true. He was 17 years old when he graduated Q school. He was the youngest. And then he was the youngest to get his tour card at 17 was a lie. Because in order to get your tour card and get, gain full membership for the PGA, you have to be 18. Uh. So he turned it. He was 17 when he got right away Q school but couldn't do anything. He couldn't have full membership access, member benefits, until he turned 18 to actually get his tour card. Fair enough. Didn't know that. Didn't know you had to be 18. Makes sense, obviously, but... There was somebody... Oh gosh, why didn't I take notes on this? Somebody had an, a, a snowman at least this tournament, but they still ended up shooting like under par. Really? Was it... Who was it? Gosh darn, did you not see that? No. Somebody put it. like... Gosh darn, I can't believe I didn't see this. I tried to find a video was of it. A main, like a big name? It was, I believe, it was, um, I tried to find a video of it, because I, I, I was reading an article about it, somebody was talking about it, I'm like, well, there's got to be a video of it, right? Like, I want to see that, I want to see him, like, hacking away, right? So, yeah. you know, I did not see anyone I'm looking post for that. it, and he ended up having at least, like, a snowman. I'm looking at, uh, PG. you said no one posted about it? Well, I didn't see it at the time, I, I was, like, watching... The broadcast, mm -hmm. and it, just, it must have happened like 20 minutes prior. Hmm. I'm going down the list here. But it was um, Saturday or Sunday. Who was that? Oh, jeez, man. I don't know. I don't know. They ended up still shooting under par, I believe. Well, oh, no. It was Ben Hun On. Okay. Ben On. As I remember looking for it, and they, they said in the, the article, they like spelled his name B-E-N-A-N. But it's, that's, like, just what he goes by because he's South Korean, right? He's got, like, you know, what we think is, a, like, you know, a different kind of name. Yeah. Just, but it's Byung Hun on, but he goes by Ben. So that's why I couldn't find it anywhere. Got it. But he recorded, let me see here. He had eight on a par four. So he had a snowman. And he was just, like, hacking away, apparently. Yikes. It's like, one of us. Let's go. Jeez. Not everyone. But then he shot under par, though, so not really one of us. Well, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I still ended up shooting four under par that round. Jeez. So, he would have been eight under. Talk about eight, short memory. At least part of that hole. So I mean, what did he end up? He was he finished t twelve at twelve under for the total tournament. So I mean, take out that one hole, goes par at sixteen under. He's third. Oh. <laughs> he's even in contention. You don't know he plays more aggressive. Who knows? That's so that's kind of crazy. Short memory out there. Parred the next three and then birdied the next three after that. Good for him. So I, I, that was that on my head. I wish I'd found the video for that though. But um, so yeah, on to the American Express though. We got um, 2022 winner was Hudson Swafford. Um, like I said, it was in La Quinta, California, or it's going to be in La Quinta, California. Mm -hmm. So this one's really weird. I don't know if you saw this. Three different courses. Three different courses. Mm -hmm. That's so odd. Mm -hmm. um, I never even knew they did that until I, I was looking up my notes for this so the first one is going to be at pga west stadium course mm -hmm. uh two days there i believe and then pga west nicholas for one day and then la quinta country club for the final day uh opposite or so what? it's you got pga west stadium course is thursday friday's la quinta country club i'm sorry thursday is pj west stadium course Friday's La Quinta Country Club, Saturday's PJ West Nicholas Tournament Course, and they go back to the oh, and back on, okay. stadium back course on Sunday. on Sunday. It's very different. It's very, very different. Um, the PJ West Stadium Course, though, is uh, one of the more popular of the courses. That's where they have the um, finals every other year for Q School are held. 
Um, and they're all, it's also known for its famous par three um, island green on 17's nickname Alcatraz. 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 I can't even say the word. Why can't I say it? Have you never heard of that place? I have, 100%. I just know why I can't say it. Alcatraz. 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 Alcohol? Yeah. No, it's... Alcatraz. Alcatraz. Am I saying it right? That was right. Yeah. I don't know why I can't say it. Seamus. Seamus, Seamus, Alcatraz, Alcatraz. I don't even know. So another know what I meant. Another full field. Uh, I believe the awesome was 142. We have 156 this week. Um, five of the top seven in OWGR, so you got some got some big players up there still. Um, so it should be a good, good competitive tournament. Um, you know, I was saying last week with the first full field, it was weird for betting corner because it was like, man, there's like so many names to pick from. Yeah, um, so weird. Fun. And I don't know for some reason, like I, you know, last week, I didn't feel like not confident in my picks, but it was just like overwhelming, like so many options. Yeah. Um, this week, I don't know, I found it a little easier to find my picks for some reason. So Really? Even though there's more people? I don't know. It was just something about okay. it. We'll see. Uh, but who you who, who you got as the as the winner? Um, so obviously John Rahm is listed as the favorite this week. Um, but I did not go John Rahm. I went, uh, we talked about this person. Uh, I was like, making you guess. We had talked about this person a few episodes ago because uh, we found out he was sp- one of very few people sponsored by the MLB. Oh, was that Cam Young? Cam Young. Yeah. yeah. So that's my pick this week, number 17 in OWGR. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good on that one. All right. So I got, again, another familiar name. So I know some people that do, like, betting and stuff, like betting segments, do, like, you can only pick a certain person, like, so many times or, like, a certain frequency or something like that. We yeah. aren't doing that. <clears throat> um, yeah. So you're going to see this, uh, some names, you know, be, you know, pop up more than is others. Tony Finau? No. <laughs> you said it's the it year. That's why I was It like. isn't. Um, <laughs> I'm going Tom Hoagie, outright winner here. Okay. So I got him as my as my pick. Uh, he's been playing really well. Uh, he was – oh, man, I just got rid of my leaderboard from last week. But he was up there, I think, at he, least top 20, I believe. No, he, like I, I think he was even, like, top 10. No, because I just let up I, – I read off the top 10. Or no, wait. He, he might have been T12 or something. Hang on. I'm going to pull it up because – you're, you're, you might see him come up in the uh, next segment here from myself. Um, I got the... Uh, the right it now. was two ago, I'm sorry. Century, he was T3. Okay. But this year so far, he was T3 at Century, T4 at Shriners, and T9 at Zozo. Right. So, yeah, so he's obviously been popping up. He yeah. was, actually, he was T41 this week. Okay, he did a little worse than I thought this week. But, yeah, was, uh, okay. last week... He's tired. He gets to come back to the United States. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's still in the United States. <laughs> Jesus Right. He's, uh, in the, uh, he's in the lower 48. Yeah. No. Correct. So I got Tom Hoagie. And, uh, yeah, I, I, again, he's kind of like – he's not a rookie, but like Taylor Montgomery, he's been playing really well lately, and I think he's going to pop up a lot here this year. How long has Tom Hoagie been in the, in the tour, you know? Um, at least a few months. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm looking that up right now, too. Um I, I, my guess is five years. Let's see. Let's see. He's 33 years old. Turned pro 2011. Oh, wow. Okay, so a lot longer than that. Gotcha. Uh, you want to see more stats on him? Uh, TCU. I think we talked about that, yeah, with the term, with the championship. That's yep. right. Uh, he is 6'1", 175, if you're interested. Got his player profile here. How old is he? 33. 33. Statesville, North Carolina. This is not a dating site, guys. Uh, and uh, <laughs> guess what major? This is interesting. What major did he have in TCU? Um, Texas Christian University. Pretty basic. Morality? Morality? <laughs> Texas Christian University? I don't know. What? I'm just messing. Uh, I'm going to guess mathematics. You said it's basic. Accounting and finance. Mm, okay. So, good for you, Tom Hoagie. He can, he can better manage his, uh, his, his winnings. How much, do you think, how much do you think he's won so far? I just got rid of his player profile. Gosh, that's dang. okay. I just, I'll pull it up. It out. For his, this is career? Yeah, it's career. Oh, 10 million. $10 million. Total money is a little over 13. Okay. So I'm leaving his profile up in case we keep asking more questions. All right. So yeah, I got Tom Hoagie. <laughs> um, you got anything else on American Express there? No, no. I have purse is $8 million. Like I said, the favorites, John Rahm. I saw something that John Rahm was like kind of bashing the format of this tournament last year, and now he's playing it again. The format being that like playing at different courses. 
I just so. don't. I wonder why they do that. I didn't really see why. Can't really get used to it because that's different. Because like, usually like you know the caddy and the player will walk and play the course, take notes, all that good stuff before the tournament um, starts on Thursday. So how does that work? Like it's just longer days where they're going to all three courses now. Yeah, and then usually like you know like the people that put the tournament on like make go holes harder some days and mm-hmm. a little easier. You know, make and kind of you know do some adjustments to kind of make the golfers think a little more so that is interesting how far away are they are they from each other i believe they're all on the same property really yeah that's a massive well i guess like pinehurst you talked about that a couple right. weeks ago that's yeah. an insanely big property um interesting interesting so i'm assuming and the what was huh. it, the first one the pj west is a pete die course yeah yeah so that'd be interesting. The amount of bleachers and stadiums I think have to go up for three courses instead of just like think about how much stadiums they could put up at uh, TPC Scottsdale times three. That's crazy. They even take them down at that point. Well, I mean, not, as many, not as many spectators as waste management. No, I wonder. I mean, it probably still gets. But still, yeah, it's still a good amount, but not as many as yeah. waste management. But I think yeah. wasn't waste management hold the record for like the most visitors in a weekend. Uh, I think it's a single day. Or a single day, yeah. yeah. I think it's like... And I think it beats like the Indy 500 by a certain amount. Yeah. I think the Indy 500 is a I thought, I thought I remember it was like 400,000 on Saturdays, like what it, like the record is. Something like that. Yeah, I think we looked crazy. at it the first year we went, yeah, yeah, Saturday. I think it was like 480, if I remember right. Jesus. But I could be wrong there. Plus Super Bowl this week, just from right. perspective. Um, so yeah, that's the American Express. We got that this weekend. Um, let's get into betting corner. <laughs> Got, got back in the dub column here. Uh, we had Chris Kirk top 10. Got He finished solo third, mm-hmm. and that put me up plus 28 units this week. Yep. And uh, I had all mine all mine missed last week. You Ted were Montgomery so my, close to Taylor Montgomery. Montgomery was my closest one. Um, had him T10. He finished with, what, T12? T12. When he finished his round, he was at T10. And there was like yeah. 12 people tied at T10. Yeah. And then as more people trickled in, it, it messed with the leaderboard. The leaderboard. Um, then I had the closest one after that was Corey Connors. I had him T5, and he also finished, I think, T12. I week. think he was Whoa. one stroke from being T5. No, no way. Corey Connors. For two strokes, maybe. Yeah, he was two. He was also T12. Okay, so he would have been two strokes to yeah. being, yeah, he would have had to do T4. So two strokes from being T5. So, or from five, top five. You had him on there, too, didn't you? Or you had him outright. I had him outright. That's yeah. right. Um, so he just finished really strong. He started out kind of weak, and then like his last two rounds, I think he was like ten under his last two rounds or something like that. He just yeah. started in two weak. All right, so you ready for the scorecard? Scorecard currently sits at I am minus three hundred and seventy units. You are minus two hundred and seventy nine units. Seventy nine. Two hundred and seventy nine. Yeah. So back on top, but it can change in an instant. Very quick. <laughs> well, not in an instant. In a week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By Sunday. So we got, I got five more picks again this week. I, I assume five. you do the same. I'm going to start it off here. I am going kind of bold. <clears throat> I haven't done a parlay with this high odds in a lot, like ever, in the betting corner. I got Over a thousand? Oh, yeah. Wow. Wyndham Clark, top 20. Okay. Sahith Thigala, top 10. Mm-hmm. Plus 2,265. <sighs> One unit. No, I'm just kidding. 15 units. That's pretty good. I like that. So, Wyndham Clark, Seath Gala, they're both uh, West Coasters. Both grew up there uh, out in you know, the country out there in California. Um, so, familiar with the area. And the Gala is obviously pretty good. I think he was <laughs> Gala is great. top 15, I think, in yeah. the odds this week. So, let's go for it. I like it. All right. I've got a familiar name. I'm... I'm I'm a big fan. I'm going to Taylor Montgomery again. <laughs> T10. Odds are plus 330, 25 units. I like him, man. He's he's consistent. He's consistent. Plus, he's native to Vegas, so he's familiar with the desert landscape area, playing conditions. Is it desert in La Quinta, though? Yeah. Oh, for sure. In California? Yeah. Is it desert? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's on California like, is on like the eastern side of the, in California there is. I don't know. It's like it's on, like it's, on the coast, though. Oh, no. La Quinta? I'm going to look it up. It's like... It's not going to be desert. No, I mean, it's not going to be... Yes, it will. 
Is La Quinta desert? I mean, it's just in between like Los Angeles and San Diego. Yeah. It might be a little deserty. Okay. Yeah. La Quinta is a desert resort city. Okay. Okay, it's a little more inland than I thought. Okay. Closer to Joshua Tree. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, all right. Now. Come on now. All right, Montgomery. And that's why you picked him for, what was the Vegas tournament? Uh, uh, Shriners. Shriners, yeah. Yeah. I remember that. All right, so it's Tyler Montgomery again. I got, again, familiar name. I'm going Tony Finau again. Top five. Okay. Plus 335 units. Wow, 35 units. Yeah. Pretty big. <clears throat> all right, I'm doing a parlay next here. I got Will Zelatoris. Tony. A little shaky hands. Yeah, a little shaky, a little shaky hands. hands but button. That's why I have him top 20. <laughs> Will Zelatoris, top 20. Tony Finau, top 10. Uh, odds are plus 380, 22 units. I like right. that one. Yeah, old shaky hands. Old shaky putter. Yeah. He is, that, those videos are so, it's, hard, it's scary. And it's he pulls it crazy back. how good he is, even with that. I know, I know. Like, if he had any kind of, like, semblance of, like, a real putting stroke, he guy would be <laughs> raking in dough. It's pretty. It's pretty bad. He. I, I mean, he won. Like what? There's the back-to-back tournaments. I think last season where he missed because of a putt. I remember it's like the scene, everything. I remember just like him, like with the putter going behind his head, like he's all upset. And then the next week, I think it was the next week is when he ended up winning. That was his first win. Yeah. yeah. So okay. hopefully he's had some time to uh, to really work on that uh, on that on that stroke. All right. My next one here. I mentioned the South Koreans are so good at golf. There's so many <laughs> South Koreans that are always in the top of the leaderboard. I forgot you said that you're going to do this. Yes, I remember this. They're so like they're so good. I want I didn't do it, but I want to look up the per oh. capita of how many are like in the top 100. I was I forgot to do it, but I am sticking true to my. I'm going to pick a South Korean. I oh, think man. I think a never betting corner. Okay. So I'm doing not the names you're kind of thinking of, Tom Kim, Sung Jae. Which I had Sung Jay last week, didn't do anything. CT for me. Pan? CT, I don't think he's South Korean. I think he's. I oh, I forget what country he's from. I can see their logo, their flag, but I can't remember what the country it is. But KH Lee. KH Lee, top 10, plus 450. I'm going 25 units on that. South Korean's never going to let me down. They're consistent. Except Sung Jay last week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, did he, uh, where did he end up at last week? Sung Jay. Uh, he made the cut. Up. No, no, I don't think he, I don't think he made the cut. He did make Where the did cut. Where did Tom Kim end up last week? Tom Kim, I don't think he made the cut either. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyways, uh, my next one's uh, you cited him earlier. Sahith Thigala, top 10 as well. Odds are plus 450, 22 units on that one. I like Sahith. I'm, I'm ready for him to rock his sweatshirt with the <laughs> with the little you know things dangling down. I don't know how that doesn't distract him. I'm surprised they allow that. I mean, I'm, I'm not mad they do. I'm yeah. just surprised they do. Yeah. But. Yeah. I guess they allow that. Just you can't wear shorts. Yeah, I don't. To see, you'd think that would fall into the same category of like, um, what is it, classiness, you know? And it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know why they allow that, but not shorts. It's odd. But I mean, I'm not mad about it. It's whatever. I like seeing it. I don't care. I don't either. Um, so my next one here, he cashed for me once in part of a parlay. Thomas Detry. He's kind of been on fire the first part of the year. He hasn't played um, on a tournament in PGA, I think, in a few weeks, though. But I got Thomas Detry, top 10. That's plus 915 units. Some big odds. The German. That's big odds, Let's man. go, baby. All right. My second to last one, I mentioned him as my – I'm changed, I'm not going an outright this week. So I'm going to go two top fives here. So Cameron Young, top five. Odds are plus 450, 19 units. Cam Young. Cam Young. All right. The my, MLB star. My last one here again, Tom Hoagie, outright. Sticking with the outrights. So he is plus 3,500, 10 units. Mm-hmm. If he, oh, I, if's easy to say. If, yeah, exactly. But, oh, come on, baby. That would, I think that would get me into green on betting corner right there. Yeah, it would. It would be right there. That'd be 30, 36, 36 yeah, so 35 you know, units plus 35 or plus, plus 350. 50, units, sorry, yeah, you're down 279. Yeah. So I think the same for my parlay too. No, I'd be just under 
I'd be really close to getting the green if I parlay it. Hit. But we'll see. so that's what we got for. I got Benny. one more. Oh, sorry. Yeah, shit. Uh, Tom Hoagie. <laughs> it's very repetitive. Tom Hoagie top five odds plus seven fifty. Twelve units. Like, I got one more. Come on. Come on. I got to get it out, man. I'm trying to, like, I gotta get you. Sh- I got to make sure I can say it so when these hit, I can make the clips for them. I got to, like, s- sneak it in. Like, you, know, you only get four. You know, I got to cut it off. I got to try to get my advantages where I can. Oh, got to, like, uh, Jedi mind trick you. And, uh, Jedi only, mind trick. Jedi mind trick and only getting four picks in. Like the, uh, the the scene from The Office when Jim does the thing with the computer and he goes, do do do. And then oh, like, yeah. Dwight wants the mint. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to do to me? Like, you're trying to trick me? <laughs> Condition into, like, you? Yeah. Oh, I only want four picks this week. Come on now. So if you only do four picks, you put more money on them. So when you hit, yeah. you, you're going to make more. So you probably should do that. Oh, know. yeah? You think so? <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and do it then, too, my friend? Oh, but, thank you. I think I'm going to change the strategy, like, of these bigger fields. I don't know if I'm going to go for outright. It's just, I mean, that's just so... I've been doing two, and I did go with Matt this time. Yeah. So... It is hard, but, but yeah. Because so even like I even like adjust my strategy when like we go a bigger field instead of doing for my parlay, instead of doing a top ten, top five, I'll do a top twenty, top ten. Oh, that's what I like doing. Top ten, top yeah. five. Yeah, it's tough. such a needle to thread. It's, I mean, they're all needles to thread, honestly. If you think yeah, about but you need two things. I mean, we're doing top ten on one of these picks, then you're asking for a top five and that. Like, it's know. just so. Whew. It's tough. Might have to abandon the parlay. Might be my next one if I have to adjust at all, but I don't think I'm going to. Parlay's not fun. Yet. Parlay's fun. Uh, yeah, creates creates some upside, obviously. Um, but if I have to adjust, if I go on a cold streak, I might have to do that. We'll see. But we'll see. that'll do it for betting corner. Stick around for our interview or your interview with um, a guest here right after this. Thank you guys for continuing to listen to the Cactus Golf Podcast. Super excited to close us out with another interview this week. Uh, this week is someone that uh, someone I've been talking to on Sylvia social media um, for quite some time. We were just talking off camera a little bit ago. I think this is the first time that we're actually um, not in person, but like it's to see each other's faces and everything when we actually have a converse now, which is exciting. Um, hopefully one day we'll actually get to, to meet up in person. Uh, but I am. Uh, we brought on Dan Sardilli, the uh, founder of Putting Pros. Uh, if you guys don't know what Putting Pros is, you're going to learn a lot about it today. But if you've seen him on social media, uh, it's very exciting every single month. And I guess I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you explain what is Putting Pros because you're going to be the better explaining it than, than myself. I'm sure I got I'll get the gist of everything, but I want you to to explain to everyone what you what you guys do at Putting Pros. Yeah, thanks. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me on. I'm excited to, to chat about Putting Pros and. To just uh, brag about you guys a little bit. So, putting pros, if you guys haven't heard about it already, is a monthly sweepstakes where you enter a putting video, which is the shot of the month, and then you enter yourself into prizes that we give away every single month. So, this month, for example, you post a video of a putting drill. Um, when you post, you get entered in one time for posting your video, and you get an extra entry for tagging three of your friends, and you get entered to win a perfect practice putting match. So we're we're trying to give away things that you guys would want to help improve your game. But uh, yeah, that's that's basically what Putting Pros is. Uh, you can find us at Putting Pros on Instagram and TikTok. Awesome, that's awesome, man. And uh, let me make sure too is every single month the the prizes change, correct? And then the actual like the the drill. So like this month is you have to do a putting drill, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. and, so and then like, there's different ones. I remember like I entered one time last year where. Like it was like, I forgot what the, what the theme of it was, but I remember I was putting on top of like a picnic bench in the park and like, just like crazy fun ones. And it's, it's exciting. It's, it makes practicing your, your putting fun and special. Right. And like you, at the same time, like you're improving your game, which is probably one of the most, arguably the most frustrating parts of the golf game is is putting. So not only do you get to practice more, you also can possibly earn something for practicing. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I love exactly. the concept of it. It's, it's awesome. And, that's, and, and you're exactly right. Every month it's a new shot, whether it's, uh, you know, a breaking putt or a 10 foot putt or, you know, putt through your legs or things like that. We I try to keep it a little bit open-ended for everybody so mm-hmm. that they can be creative. I mean, on top of a park bench, no one's ever done that. So, you know, <laughs> you were the first one to ever do that. Uh, but, but yeah, it's, that's the whole point of why I even started putting pros. I mean, I was, I live in Connecticut in New England. So over the winter, you 
I mean, there are heated driving ranges, et cetera, and there's golf mm-hmm. on the other. You know, at home, you, you're not able to practice the long game, so you have the ability to practice short game. It really started with me and a bunch of my buddies. I was just getting into golf, and the social aspect is just such an amazing part of golf. You meet so many wonderful people. You get to hang out with your friends, meet new friends, and I was just jonesing for some, you know, golf time with my buddies and we had all just started playing and then we were in lockdown kind of early on in covid and i was like you know what there's got to be a way for us to be competitive and practice putting all in the same space so it started out as a facebook group where we would just do shots of the month or shots of the week and uh you know the winner whoever had the most likes or whoever had the coolest shot would just like win a gift card or something and then the next year came around and i was like i think we can I think we can make this a little more special and there's a beautiful platform out there. You know, Instagram is, is a great platform for sharing videos and sharing content. So that's why we decided to, to kind of jump on that. And, and that's awesome. Let's, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. Cause you kind of, you kind of brought it up a little bit about you and your personal journey in starting golf. So when did you, we said you started golfing just a few years ago that I heard correctly. Yeah, that's, that's accurate. So uh, I, I grew up around the game. My dad and my grandfather played a ton and never really got into it personally. You know, I was, I was a high school athlete. I was a hockey player. And so okay. there was a, a natural progression from watching Hill, Happy Gilmore to trying to <laughs> see what I can do on the golf course. So, you know, we would go to the range every once in a while and I would, I would mess around, but never was super interested. Uh, and then about the year before COVID, I moved from Massachusetts to Connecticut uh, for work reasons and then kind of just started meeting people and talking about getting out there and playing golf. And, uh, and that's when I started playing. So again, uh, definitely a mediocre golfer at best. Uh, we, we don't have to talk about our handicap on here, right? No, absolutely not. Oh, yeah, we, we can just leave it. It can be ambiguous. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's okay. You know, yeah. it's just okay. Um, but, but yeah, so uh, a self-professed mediocre golfer and, you know, incentivizing myself to practice putting was one thing that I could do over the winter. Uh, so that's kind of where, where it all began. That's awesome, man. That's like super exciting. I, I, I'm kind of, I'm very similar, very mediocre golfer at best. I've been working extremely hard at, at trying to improve my game. Um, but you know, the, the putting aspect is, is definitely, I, I feel like there's some weeks when my putting aspect is my strong suit in my game. And then there's some weeks where I'm like, I feel like I never even touched a putter before. I don't, I can't, how do I even read this break? I, I it makes no sense. So I, I, I get you on that, man. And uh, yep. it's, it's very, very similar. So what has, what has been, uh, you kind of talked about, you know, starting putting pros uh, that, that whole aspect of it. it started as a Facebook group and then, you know, kind of branched out and grew and uh, it definitely grew in size. But what has been the most frustrating part of starting putting pros? Uh, I would say the most frustrating part is probably figuring out how, how to reach people. I mean, I think that as, I mean, I'm technically a business owner, but not necessarily with putting pros. It's more of a social group. And and you always want to reach more people so that more people can find out about you. And that's one of the hardest things. And I'm no expert on the algorithm. I'm not a marketing expert or a social media manager or anything like that. So I'm figuring out how to reach new people, how to reach golfers. And, and that's been one of the most frustrating part. Cause I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way, Matt. Yeah. It's like, we know how awesome, like what we're doing is, but yeah. how do we tell the world about it? And sometimes you feel like the algorithm, like just like shoots you down. <laughs> You're like, Oh man, that I thought that video was going to slap. And it just like, it just petered out and it's like, Oh, bummer. But no, uh, oh, yeah. I agree. I agree completely. And like, I feel like some of the videos that we put out, you know, you, you put so much time into it. And you're like, this is the one, this is the one, this is it. And then you put it out, like you said, and then just nothing. And then some of the videos that you like put not barely any time into it, those are the ones that blow up. And you're like, really? That's, that's the one. Okay. Yeah. Um, sounds good with me. And then right. your you comment too, about like, you know, finding people um, because like what you do is like, like and same kind of similar to what we do. It's like a no brainer, right? Like, you that that's like the whole aspect of it is you want to make it as much of a no brainer as possible because you want to just provide value for, for people and have a good time and meet new people and create this community. But then like people, I feel like people are just so skeptical nowadays and they're like, nah, you know what? Just this seems too good to be true. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and pass. And you're like, man, dude, no, like this really is like, all you have to do is post a video of yourself putting and you're going to enter to win something. And like people yeah. win all the time. Like these are past winners and they're like, nah, seems too good <laughs> to be true. I don't think this is for me. And it's like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Incredibly it's, frustrating. It's so I believe me, I, 
I, I, I totally get you on that. I totally get you on that. Let's talk, let's touch the, a little bit about the social media piece. Now you said you're, you're no expert at the social media piece, but um, let's see right now on, on Instagram, almost a little under 2000 followers on Instagram. I would, I would say that's, that's pretty dang good, man. Um, so yeah. my question for you is, and now this is, you know, for the, the listener out there that's trying to grow their social media account, whether it's a golf page or whatever it is. And this question is also just for me too. Um, that I wanted to ask you is, you know, how do you, how do you get so much, how many, many followers? Cause a little over, over 2000, a little under 2000, that's, that's still a good amount of followers, right? Is it, yeah. you know, like you have that collaboration piece with other brands where, you know, they talked about perfect practice a little bit ago and, um, some of the other brands, other brands that you partner with, is that how you think you, your, your, your social media presence is growing because you're partnering with them and they're also sharing some of your content uh, at the same time? Do you think that's part of it or what do you think? Yeah, I think there's a few things that go into it. I think the exposure of some brands and, and that, that kind of projecting to the audience that the brand already has, because we do work with a lot of smaller niche companies too. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, Rip It Grips out of Australia is a really cool brand that we've worked with and like they don't have a big following in the US, but we've gained a lot of followers in Australia because of that. And um, those, that's been helpful. But I would say like overall, I'm, I'm totally of the mindset of, collaboration over competition so i i message other golf brands or other golf influencers if you want to call it that all the time and just say like hey man would love to collaborate with you what does that look like for you and like how can i help you grow and then Mm -hmm. a lot of the time because we have a platform of a certain amount of followers which in the scheme of instagram and tiktok is not too many but again i'm proud of what we built absolutely i'm not minimizing that at all but you know people who see their content and then starts to follow them it just grows our network of who we're working with so i think collaboration has been huge um partnering with certain brands has been big and then i mean the nature of the putting pros competitions is that we are tagging and sharing user generated content so Mm -hmm. the, the content of the entries is telling more people about that golfer so they see that golfer on our stories and it's automatically promoting them to our followers on Instagram and TikTok. TikTok is exploding, which is, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, it's been exploding for a little while. You wonder, like, well, that's another conversation of <laughs> real followers on TikTok versus bots and random things. But yeah, um, but anyways, I think the the collaboration is the key, and the fact that putting pros can be used as a growth platform for other potential golfers who are looking to grow their Instagram or their following on YouTube or things like that is part of what's made it successful because it's not about putting birds it's about them so i think you said it you said it early on in this is when you're when you're reaching out to some of these other influencers or brands it's not only a lot of people come with the mindset of oh if only they could share my stuff it would help me you said it you said what can i do for you that's the piece that's that that's the piece that people miss because it's if when you go to a brand or an, an influencer with can you help me that's a one-sided you know agreement mm-hmm. in order for a deal and agreement to be made both parties have to benefit for it there's and there's times where one side benefits but to me that's that's charity right? right that's when you know someone just throws you a bone and just posts you and that doesn't happen rarely rarely ever you know c- true collaboration is when both parties benefit right so coming with that mindset of what can I do for you, you know, or an idea of, you know, I can also tell all my followers about your brands. We can showcase this or that X, Y, and Z. That's the key. I think right there that you said it. And a lot of people, they don't think about that. They think about themselves first. So when they, tr- they're, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're very similar to me. I send so many DMS via social media or just finding people on like, at LinkedIn and then finding their email address and trying to connect with them. And, you know, that's yep. how, you know, we started uh, with cactus and I'm sure Dude, I'm so guilty of that. Oh yeah. So and that's, it. it. I think that's, it's, that's how you have to get, you have to get in front of you and have to network. That's totally fine. Um, but in order to get those return returning DMS, uh, you have to make it, you know, influential. It had to make it, you know, beneficial for them too, as well. Mm-hmm. And that's, you said it too. I, I'm so guilty of it. It cracked me up one time. I like zoomed out on what I was doing. I got an advertisement for a golf brand, and I was like, "Oh, I like what they're doing." So I DM'd them from the ad that I got sponsored on my Instagram feed. I was like, "This is kind of like reverse advertising." Like I'm like, <laughs> I'm reaching out to you, even though you targeted me. But like, I think we can work together. 
And I was like, that's when I knew I had a problem. No. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's all about putting the feelers out there, seeing who aligns with what you guys are trying to do and trying to come alongside them so you both can grow. That's been one of the things in 2023, we brought on some ambassadors. And at first I was nervous because these are like guys that, guys and girls and people of all different locations that already participate in our tournaments, in our sweepstakes. And some of them are past winners and some are not. And I was like, oh man, I'm taking away from their chance to kind of participate in these tournaments because as an ambassador, you, you can't win anything. You mm -hmm. just are there to grow alongside. But then when I, when, again, I zoomed, zoomed back a little bit and I was like, well, if we're both growing alongside each other, then that's the dream. So that's, Absolutely. that's our vision kind of on ambassador level too. So. Last question I have for you, Dan, is what is your five-year vision for putting pros? I think we'd love to continue to grow the community. I think that we have something here that encourages people to practice their short game and, and practice putting, which is something that's often overlooked. Um, we would love to start to provide some training aids for putting practice. Um, I think that that's a no-brainer. Again, uh, it's exactly aligned with our mission to encourage people to, to practice putting. So maybe having some tools that we endorse or that are products that we find helpful uh, in order to to provide that to uh, people who are winning the sweepstakes or things of that nature. I mean, it's all about just growing what we're doing. So growing the people that are a part of it and who are big fans of what we're doing and and providing value back to them. So who knows what five years from now will look like, but, you know, maybe we'll have a, a you know, a putting mirror or a putting gates or a putting mat of our own as opposed to um, something that's branded with something else. I love that. I think that's a fantastic idea or even like just that middle step in between of like, you have all these partners to um, perfect practice, for example, and having them create a putting pros exclusive product, right. Mm. With your branding on it, only, only, you know, made for your community. That's it. You know, mm -hmm. the same way at that, like, these, and I think about this from like other brands perspective of like, just, just a random example here, but like Ralph Lauren Polo, they have exclusive products that they only sell in certain retailers. Mm -hmm. So like they don't sell them on their, on their website. They don't sell them at any other competition. You know, this one retailer brick and mortar store partners with Ralph Lauren and they make an exclusive product that's only sold within their, their, four, their four walls. Um, it's like that easy in between before making that, that jump of, um, you know, we're going to make our own products, which I think is a fantastic idea too. Believe me, I, I love, I love that idea. I think uh, that, you know, people, I think there's, there's a big misconception too, where people think like, oh, I just need to buy new clubs or buy a new putter and that will solve my problem. Yeah, um, so common. Versus like, uh, you know, going actually out to the course and like how many times do people actually go to the course just to practice putting or chipping the short game rarely. And I was mm -hmm. guilty of that for a long time, but I, I definitely am grateful to say I've changed that. But like a lot of people just go there, they get a large bucket of balls, you know, tip the bucket over, tee up, let the driver fly, man. And that's what they, that's what they do. And then, uh, you know, actually creating products that makes it exciting for them to, to actually work on their, their putting because, I mean, every single, unless you're, unless you're holing out some of these holes, every single hole, you're going to be taking your putter out of your bag. Exactly. So not every single hole, are you, are you pulling driver? Um, you know, yeah. so. Yeah. I think that's, that's one of the things that I I saw a post recently that, um, you know, it was like, if you want to break a hundred work on your driver, if you want to break 90 work on your short game, and if you want to break 80 work on your putting and a, to a degree, I totally understand where that's coming from. You have to keep the ball in bounds. You have to have short approach shots to, to score better period. But I think putting is a very controllable way to improve your score across the board. Yeah. You can practice it anywhere, basically. Yep. You can, there's so many resources about just reading greens, uh, stroke and uh, alignment and mm -hmm. everything like that. There's And it's a very small movement as opposed to yeah. the mechanics of a driver swing. So I think there's there's a lot to be had where people are leaving strokes out there because they're three putting when you know, the speed on a lag putt is the most important part of the lag putt, not necessarily just trying to get it to read the right break so you can get it in the hole. It needs yep. to be a short setup. And that's that's something that is often overlooked for, 
you know, mediocre golfers like us. <laughs> Absolutely. I love that, man. I love how you said that. Uh, I, Dan, I appreciate you for for jumping on the show and, and for giving everyone some insight into putting pros and your vision. Um, so you talked a little bit about this earlier, but where can everyone find you guys on social media? Yeah, so we're at Putting Pros on Instagram and TikTok. We also have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. Um, that's the best way to find us. We also have a website that's puttingpros.co. Uh, so you can definitely check that out, but they're going to point you right back to our Instagram because that's where all the magic happens. That's awesome. Dan, I appreciate you for being on. I really do. I'm excited to to continue watching you guys and for everyone that's listening, check them out. Enter the contest every single month with something new. Practice your Practice your game. Um, I love it. I, I got to get my, uh, my entry. I go to Vegas here, uh, I fly out tomorrow actually. So I got some time, uh, in between, I'm going to be practicing. So I'll make sure I post mine for the month as well too. So, yeah, thanks for having me on, man. I mean, I, I appreciate what you guys are doing. Cactus golf has always been a huge supporter of us, uh, since we, since we met. So that means a lot too. So thank I you. I appreciate you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you guys for, for listening. Uh, if you guys can leave a review, like comment, share the episode with everyone. And uh, we'll see you next week.